And the agree or disagree, that's for all of them to handle. Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley, yep. Mark Curry, Tiffany Haddish, whoever else he talked about. That's for them. Tyler Perry, that's for them to handle. Because I don't know those facts. I don't cover that. I don't know why everybody has wanted me to comment about Shannon Sharp and his interview with Cat Williams. Um, but I'm going to say this. You wanted me to comment about it? I'll comment about it. Before I say this, however... They want you to comment on it because of your relationship with Shannon Sharp, and then also most of the comedians that he called out, you have a relationship with, such as Steve Harvey. Let's continue. Let me say, no matter what way you slice it, you have to give Shannon Sharp and his team major props. Facts. Yep. The views for the Cat William interview has exceeded over 34 million. 40 million right now. 34 million, ladies and gentlemen, has broke the internet. Yeah. And in one day, because of one interview that has spanned over the last few days, yep. Club Shay Shay for Shannon Sharp has picked up over 600,000 subscribers. Woo! It's just, it's just big time. Just for reference, I'm on Stephen A. Smith's YouTube channel right now, which only has 460,000 subscribers. So just put that into perspective. However, he is gaining at about 20 to 30 to 40,000 subscribers per month. So he'll catch up there soon. But just for perspective. It's just big time. So props to Shannon Sharp and his team on that point. Yeah. Now, to get into the interview itself, let me say this. Okay. Before I say anything else, it's important to know I cringed through no fault of Shannon. Hmm? I'm a huge fan of Cat Williams. This brother is a brilliant comedian. That He's he spectacular. Is. He's box office. No doubt about it. And Cat Williams, he's, he's one of the greatest comedians of all time. That's a fact. And he's always been incredibly nice to me on a couple of occasions that I've had the pleasure of meeting him. One time I was hanging out in his green room with him for crying out loud. No, I was not. I was not smoking weed. I stayed off the weed. But, and I didn't see him do it, even though I'm sure if he did, he wasn't going to be apologetic about it. That's his business, his dressing room, whatever. So why are you bringing it up? Always been cool with Cat Williams. Don't okay. know him that well. But mad respect okay. for him and mad love for his talent. So what made you cringe, Stephen? Steve Harvey is a friend. Kevin Hart is a friend. Cedric the Entertainer, I don't know nearly as well as I know Steve Harvey and Kevin Hart, although I've interviewed them on quite a few occasions. But I got love for Cedric the Entertainer. Okay. And to hear... What Cat Williams had to say about them. Made you cringe? Made me cringe. Okay. Because when you got a comedian that elite coming at you and he's funny as hell and doing it, but he ain't telling any jokes. He was telling a lot he of jokes. He ain't bullshitting and he's saying what he's saying. Yeah. It's like, damn. It's an ouch moment. Yeah. I don't know what truth or falsehoods there is. I don't cover comedy. I know that when it came to what was he talking about? Some show involving Steve Harvey. Um, when it comes to that, I do know that the Steve Harvey show, because I wrote it down here, was created by Winifred Hervey, not Steve Harvey. And it was directed by Stan Lathan. Winifred Harvey is best known for her work on the television series, Golden Girls. Okay. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martin, and sister, sister. Wow. That's elite. I do know that. Okay. Outside of that, I don't know what truth or falsehood exists about anything or anybody. I don't cover comedy. All right? So I'm not in a position to say anything one way or the other. I'm just not. Having said all of that, that's not the reason I was willing to touch on this subject. 
I needed to touch on this subject, not just because the audience was asking me to, but I needed to touch on this subject once I saw this sound right here from Shannon Sharp himself on Nightcap, talking his Nightcap show with Chad Ochocinco, talking about his interview with Cat Williams. Listen to this. While all you okay. guys said was, well, Shannon, you needed a follow-up question with what? I said, I didn't ask no follow-up question when 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 said, said he didn't steal mm -hmm. the joke. Right. That's not for me to decide. You decide. Mm -hmm. You decide who do you agree with. That's mm -hmm. not my decision to make. That was it. I never said I was a journalist. I never professed to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm an entertainer. If you uh, want hard-hitting questions, yeah. 60 Minutes is the platform from you. Right. Dateline, 48 hours. Go to Lester Holt. Go to somebody that does that. That is where my problem is. What I think Stephen Smith is doing here is absolutely genius. If you notice what he's saying, he's saying, I cringed at the interview because Kat was saying some real things about people that I am friends with. Where I think he's about to go right now is to say, I have an issue with Shannon Sharp just saying, I'm an entertainer. And I find that so interesting because Stephen A. Smith is a journalist whose job is to elucidate the fact, something that Shannon Sharp was unable to do in the middle of the interview. But I don't think that that interview with Cat Williams would have gone as well with the Stephen A. Smith because he wouldn't have allowed Cat to just talk. But let's go on and see what else he has to say about Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp did not tell a lie. Shannon Sharp is not a journalist. He's a Hall of Fame football player who's a three-time Super Bowl champion, arguably the greatest tight end in football, and clearly one of them, mm. who also happens to be an entertainer. Immensely talented. He did not tell a lie. But Shannon Sharp cut himself short. Shannon Sharp is a voice in our community. Mm. He's unk. He's conscientious, he's thoughtful. I'm telling you the Shannon Sharp I've come to know. I've known, I've known him for years, but I ain't really know him. I love this brother. Mm. I love who he is. I got a hell of a lot of respect for him. Mm. And I'm, 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 he's kicking ass. Got the number one podcast on Apple in sports. Sports podcast, got number three overall podcast for Apple. He's doing his damn thing. Oh. And his brother's going to continue to be a star in this business for years to come. Yeah. Remember, you're talking to the dude who went and got him. I went and got him because I know what he, I knew what he'd bring. Yes. First take on ESPN. Number one morning show. Been number one for 12 years. And on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, when Shannon ain't there, we still winning. We number one. Oh. But it ain't like we winning on Monday and Tuesdays. And I love every single contributor on my show. It's very, very few people on the planet Earth that can look at a show and have more than 10, 11, 12 contributors. And every single thing I've asked them to do, they've all come through. Love my brothers, Ryan Clark, Swagoo. Dan Olavsky, Mad Dog Russo, Bart Scott, Kendrick Perkins, Jay Williams. But he recognizes the talent in, ta in Shannon Sharp. Chris Canty, let me not forget him. A new addition to the show. Harry Douglas doing a great job for us when he shows up. Kimberly Martin. Monica McNutt. Mina Kimes. And of course, great Molly Kiram. The matriarch of the show. Everybody has done an outstanding job. Shannon's been off the charts. Yeah. Shannon's been off the charts. Oh. And I knew how this industry would be. Yep. How they would go and try to blackball his ass when he was let go by FS1. And make no mistake, that's what happened. Okay. That's his business to tell. But he was pushed out. And I wasn't going to let that happen. Oh. I remember when I got pushed out in 2009. I wasn't going to let that happen to this brother because he's too gifted. He's too talented. He's too significant to our community. That's why I'm bringing all of this up. It's not about me. 
This is his day. He's the one that got the Cat Williams interview. He's the one that sat down and talked to him. He did all of that. He's the one that got 34 million plus people looking at this interview, broke the damn internet. It's going to get larger, by the way. I love this version of Stephen A. Smith. We all need mentors like Stephen A. Smith. We all need men riding in our corners like a Stephen A. Smith. This is 100% real and this is 100% honest. The Shannon Sharp interview was absolutely a master class. Now Stephen A. Smith is giving a master class of how to attack a subject that he doesn't really want to talk about while giving flowers to the talent that he previously identified to work with him after he was ousted from another network. I think they're going to reach about 50 million. I think it's going to be more than that. It's one of, if not, at the end, I believe at the end of it all, it will it will be, in terms of strictly numbers. One of the largest interviews. The most significant podcast episode in history. Yeah. It'll eclipse what Joe Rogan once did. It will eclipse... What others have done. Yeah. Because Cat Williams turned it out. Shit, he talked for 30 minutes before Shannon asked the question. He came there to say what he said. And to agree or disagree, that's for all of them to handle. Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley, yep. Mark Curry, Tiffany Haddish, Whoever else he talked about, that's for them. Tyler Perry, that's for them to handle. Because I don't know those facts. I don't cover that. And I've never, ever had a conversation with any of them about Cat Williams or vice versa. Ain't my place. Mm. But what I can speak to is Shannon limiting himself to being just an entertainer. He is not. Oh. He's more than that. Whoa. He's a voice. And when he called himself an entertainer, that took me aback. Because I know he's not. His brother knows football inside and out. He teaches me football every day. Just listen to him talk. Just so he knows it backwards and forwards. But he's a conscientious brother who cares about a lot of different issues. And when he speaks on it, he attacks it with fervor and vigor. He is to be respected and appreciated in ways that most people, quite frankly, haven't done enough of. And so my only words to him is that, nah, bro, you a voice. You ain't just an entertainer. This is you massive. don't ever want to give the impression that, you know what? You can just say what you want because I'm not a journalist. You don't have to be a journalist. All you need to do is be you and be that conscientious observer that you are. Now, there's a lot of people out there that's going to criticize him and they're going to talk about, well, he didn't do follow up or he didn't do this. He didn't do that. Stop that. You're jealous ass and stop it. I'm the professional journalist. Would I have done more follow ups? Probably. That's not the point. The point is. Steve Harvey came on his show and said whatever it is that he said. I never saw that interview. Yeah. Cedric the Entertainer came on the show and said whatever it was he said. So if Cat Williams wanted to come on the show and say what he said. Right. Then I understand where Shannon is coming from. Would I have done things differently? Maybe because I'm a journalist, a journalist at heart. Right. I wasn't good enough to be no, some damn Hall of Famer. Right. And the greatest tight end in the history of football. He does his show his way. I do my shows my way. What I find also so interesting about this is that Shannon Sharp wouldn't agree with Stephen A. Smith right here in a sense of the way that the interview was conducted. His job was not to get on there and to challenge Cat Williams at every uh, moment that he absolutely could have. It's sort of like if you uh, think of like the show First 48, right? What do they do? They have the witness just talk and talk and talk and talk and at some point they gather all of the talking points cross-reference it with things that they said previously things that other people in the case have said surveillance footage phone documents and then based on all that information they catch him in lies they catch him in bullshit that's essentially what happens as shannon sharp being facilitator what i think stephen a smith really has a problem with is just 
Shannon Sharp calling himself an entertainer versus a voice, which is just nomenclature at the end of the day. Who gives a shit? Whether he calls himself an entertainer or a facilitator or whatever, doesn't really matter. But Stephen A. Smith agrees that because he's not a journalist, then him stopping Cat Williams popping off wouldn't have been that good anyway. So it sounds as if where Shannon Sharp just refers to himself as an entertainer, which I see nothing wrong with that word. Stephen A. Smith is saying you're more than just an entertainer. Hold yourself at least what you refer to yourself as something more than, even though what you did was 100% the way it should have been done to get all of the information out in your podcast style. Let's finish up. Somebody else does this show their ways. Joe Rogan is different than Bill Simmons, who's different than Shannon, who's different than me, who's different than Podcast P, who's different different than than Draymond, who's different than a, a whole bunch of other people. That's the way it goes. But the one thing I was qualified to speak on with Shannon telling the world he's not a journalist. Go watch 60 Minutes. Go watch Dateline. Go watch 48 Hours. But he's right there. Nah, bro, they watching you. Okay. They watching you. And because they're watching you, don't ever call yourself just anything because you're not. Unk is my brother. It's my man. I will never ever stop being gracious and grateful to him Mm. for coming on first take. I'm sure he had options. It might not have been for the immediate moment in television because like I said, I thought he was on the verge of being blackballed. Mm. And I wasn't about to let that happen. Mm. But what he's doing with Club Shay Shay and what he's doing with Nightcap and what he's doing with all these other, no, that's Shannon. He's talented. That's Shannon. And I'm going to always support that brother, even when I disagree with him. And I'm not saying that's the case here or anything. Because I don't know what the truth is, what it isn't. I don't know. But I'm going to always root for that brother. That brother shows up to work. He does his job. He's about winning. And he's about doing what it takes to win. Mm. And the success that myself and Molly And the rest of our team has been able to enjoy our first take, although the success was there before he ever arrived. There is no question he has been an incredible asset since he has arrived. And big things are in his future. And I got news for you, Shannon. It ain't there just because you're an entertainer. It's there because you're a hell of a lot more than that, brother. Rising tides lift all boats. Shannon, nor anybody else is going to stop me from getting mine. But I get I got news for y'all. I ain't going to stop them from getting theirs either. If anything, I'm wow. going to help. This is powerful. And that goes for Shannon. That goes for Ryan Clark on the pivot. It goes for Swagoo, Marcus Spears. It goes for my man, Kendrick Perkins. It goes for all my brothers and sisters that I work with. This is real. But I don't ever want to hear any of them limiting themselves to calling themselves an entertainer. You more than that, a hell of a lot more than that. And I'm proud to say that because you deserve it. This ain't about the interview. That's a different subject for another day with somebody that's more enlightened about the comedic world than me. It's about limiting yourself in the words that you use because words matter. And I think what Steven is trying to say is you're limiting yourself because of what your detractors are saying that you should have been saying in that interview. Stephen A. Smith is saying, uh-uh, fly high. You're not just an entertainer based off of what your detractors or your contrarians are saying. You're way more awesome than that. I love this version of Stephen A. Smith. 1,000% respect to him for giving Shannon Sharp his flowers while he's still alive and supporting. This is another reason why I say your network is your net worth because you have an island of people around you that are willing to help support and uplift you when people are on your tail. Let's finish. I'm talking about Shannon Sharp, the person. And I'm talking about Shannon Sharp, the figure that he has become in this industry. He's not going anywhere. He's only getting bigger. And it ain't just because he's an entertainer. He's more than that. Just remember that, bro. Just remember that. 
powerful. That's the end of it right there. I think also Stephen A. Smith probably felt an obligation to say all of these things because it appears as though I've seen multiple interviews of Shannon Sharp kind of sort of complaining about all of these other different podcasters that have been bringing him up. And it's apparent that um, he wasn't ready for that degree of hate. And, you know, I don't know if he was even pre prepared for a video that got 40 million views in just a week and the type of criticisms that's going to come as a result of that. And I know as someone who's on the internet as well, you could get a thousand comments about some, something, but it'd be the five comments that say something negative that can get to you and end up being in your content in the future. And I think this was Stephen A. Smith's way of uplifting him in a public forum while doing it with love. To me, it's absolutely amazing all of the different things that have come out off of one conversation between Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp. Not only do you have the entire comedian industry on its heels, but you also have Hollywood or Hollyweird on its heels as well. But out of the dirt is also rising a few different roses. And I think this currently trending number four on the YouTube homepage conversation with Stephen A. Smith on Shannon Sharp is one of those roses. I think it's been extremely interesting to watch all of these mainstream pop culture figures slowly make their ways onto decentralized platforms such as YouTube. You've seen a proliferation of all of these athletes, right? These sportscasters such as Stephen A. Smith kind of make their own YouTube channels. You have previously syndicated news anchors such as Tucker Carlson or Don Lemon starting YouTube channels now because they understand the power of connecting directly to an audience without the corporate overlords guiding the things that you are saying. And I think as a result, we have the opportunity to see conversations like this that are real and that are true. But anyway, again, shout out to Stephen A. Smith. I thought that this was an absolutely excellent tribute from one brother to another. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Me, to tourism reviews at gmail.com. Guys, what do you think about this conversation? Leave it down for me in the comment box down below. I'll review them and we'll talk about them, all right? Until next time, YouTube.